here begins the Cape Wrath Trail. <laughs> Looking forward to it, apprehensive. 5am. 5am. Ish. <laughs> yeah. So it is just after 10 and things are not going very well. You can see we are in North Allerton. Didn't get very far because Neil's car broke down. So you may recognize that this is not Neil's car. And that's because we have swapped to a rental car because we only got 50 miles before Neil's car broke down. He is famous for broken down cars. So this is a rental car. We are now up against the clock to make it for the ferry, which we've got about half an hour to. And yeah, good luck to us. <laughs> well, I can't say it's been relaxing. Absolutely dashing just to make the ferry because of the whole car debacle. But it's within sight and I think we can get there. And what we didn't even mention is that the car park was closed when we got to Fort William. <laughs> Miracle, but hey, we're here, mate, we're here. So getting to this point of crossing over to the other side and starting the walk was pretty special. Do you want to put a stone each and I'll take a photo for you? Good idea. The other voice you can hear is Anais, who was a vet that we met, who walked the first part with us. She just finished the West Highland Way. So here we go. Here's the stones that uh, Alexandra and Peter did for us. Neil's going to nice. put one of them down under the stone tree. Good luck to us. Put it next to the ladybird. There you go. <laughs> so there are your stones, Lexi and Peter. And once that important duty was completed, it was time to continue heading up the glen to try and regain some distance and find somewhere to camp for the night. So we're just continuing deeper into Connor Glen. It's a really good path, actually. Um, well, more like a sort of gravel road. Um, lots of great camp spots by the river at this point. Um, so it'd be a good place to stop if we needed to. Yeah, so we're gonna just see how far we can go, set up a camp spot, probably not a lot further, maybe half an hour. It's meant to be some rain coming in at about eight, so try and get set up as the first drops of that arrive, I think. Pretty good recovery. We'll get the proper camera out tomorrow and try and get some uh, better footage, I think. So we, a little bit late pitching camp, tried to walk on just a bit further and the rain started coming in at about eight o'clock, pretty much as predicted. And really it was too late for us to set up. So we got a bit wet. Uh, so as you can see, I've got a bit of a washing line up here in the Lanchan too. Works quite well. It's uh, still raining outside, but quite light for now. I think that's basically gonna go all night. Didn't really do much recording outside because the rain was heavy throughout the night, but this was the beautiful night one camp spot. It's just shy of the Bothy in Kona Glen, the estate Bothy, um, which it just started raining, so we didn't make it to. Anyway, uh, after yesterday's hard day um, with the travel up here, we're having a bit of a late uh, start, having had a lie-in. So day two continues and we're just about to um, go around uh, Mail and the Dam um, into Glenfinnan. It's been raining quite a lot, everything's a bit damp, but uh, weather's uh, otherwise decent. But as we headed deeper into the wilderness of the Cape Wrath Trail, the weather challenges were set to continue. So we're finally coming over the pass towards Glenfinnan and um, quite boggy after the rainfall last night, so it made it a bit slower than we'd have hoped for. Well, that way down to Glenfinnan, about another five and a half K by my estimation, in time hopefully for a lunch. 
It's really wet underfoot. Definitely wet shoes and wet socks already. Just gotta embrace it. So annoyingly, we've got to the edge of the Glenfinnan Forest and there's a sign saying that the bridge over the River Callop is closed. So we're gonna have to go to the road, which is not what we wanted to do at all. There's the Glenfinnan Monument, which was a welcome sight in the background. And we are about to drop into the visitor centre and see if we can get something for our lunch. Enjoying uh, Scottish delicacies at the Glenfinnan Visitor Centre. Heading out of Glenfinnan over this nice bridge uh, towards the viaduct. And once past Harry Potter's viaduct, we continued up Glenfinnan towards the Bothy, bumping into Alistair, the estate manager on the way. So this is uh, Glenfinnan that we're just walking through towards Corrie Holly Bothy. The viaduct is long back in the distance now and we bumped into Alistair who's the gilly who keeps this estate and he gave us some important information that we need to stay on the east side of the River Peen as we go over the Bealuck uh, tomorrow morning um, because many of the bridges are down uh, further along. Also, he's going to bring us some firewood, hopefully. There it is. Right. Will we have some bothy friends? Or will we have it to ourselves? Soon to find out. Hello. All ours for now at least. It's quite a success story. 1997 I fetched that off. Yeah. And uh, I didn't plant a tree in it. So true to his word, Alistair came back and brought us some firewood and gave us some great uh, tales about the estate that he's managed for so many years as well. What a character. Welcome as it seemed at the time, only the next day would we realise how important that night indoors in the warmth drying off would be for what faced us ahead. It's day three of the Cape Wrath Trail and we're getting absolutely soaked. It feels like the proper trail has really kicked in now. Uh, can't keep anything dry, just gonna go for it. Serious bog. Legendary landmark on the Cape Wrath Trail. Make sure we close it. So this is the exit from top of uh, Glenfinnan into Glenpeen now. Close that gate. I did. Glen Peen and the amount of water is uh, not something I've seen before. It's rained for two days and wow. Well, I've just had to ford the River Peen in this condition right there. I can tell you that was not easy. The uh, power of those rapids in the middle was uh, something else. You know, feeling that as you place your foot it might be taken away on a rock. 
it slipped. Oh. Neil has uh, gone a little bit upstream to see if it's a bit slower before the meander. Uh, it's just been a lot of heavy um, bog descending and just very challenging terrain with the amount of rainfall that there's been. There's not been a whole lot of scenery today, it's just been too dreek, I think is Scott's word for it. Uh, we overshot slightly, trying to follow a bit of a bearing route rather than the fence line, which we should have done. You can see the rain is well and truly back in action. Uh, that's the bridge over the River Peen, apparently the only one that uh, is still in existence at the moment. So over we go into Glendestry Forest. The River Peen. Oh, big hole in the bridge. Huh? Right, off we go into the forest. Here we are, we're in the Glendestry Woods. Moss is so pretty, it's like an enchanted sort of hobbit land. Um, this is a long time on some forestry tracks now. So we're gonna try and pick up a bit of pace and then uh, stop for a bite to eat, maybe a cure boffy. Water filtration with smart water bottles is not that much fun. We could have gone with a pouch to gather water more easily. Just making our way through Glendustry Woods. We're on the big sort of left-hand turn, about a third of the way to Acure Bottom. What's that you got, Neil? Some kind of Tunnock's caramel biscuit that I left in my pocket as we walked through the <laughs> Tunnock's, that's what happens to your food in this environment. <laughs> but it's all right inside though still. Yeah, Just I'm gonna try it. With very little respite from the rain, we were really ready for a rest in a cure Bothy. So we just spotted this little rock with a stick in it, and I think that's the way marker probably saying, head down here to get to Akur Bothy. It's often commented that Akur Bothy is easily missed, but if you look carefully, there is a little can and an easy and clear path down through the forest to the right. After a decent lunch, a cool bothy would be the site of yet another disaster to deal with. Sometimes on a trip like this, there's something that's just too traumatic to have your camera out filming. When Neil was trying to close his rucksack after lunch, his single point of failure, the big zip, decided to pop. Well, a section of the day is missing because Neil had a massive gear failure zip on his rucksack popped and we had to do an emergency repair, taking out some links, had to get the old surgical skills out to do some stitching. Seems to be holding out, we'll see how far we get. Whoa, bashing through the forest, there's just not much joy in it really. It's uh, very muddy and destroyed by the heavy machinery, um, slipping around, some really steep climbs as well. Yeah. So we've made it to the Bielek and we're about to go over the top uh, and then <sighs> towards Sorlis. <laughs> Weather unchanged. And that's the estate barrier up there, that robust fence and a cairn. As well as the challenges of gear failure of 32 kilometers a day towards Sorlis was challenging with both weather and terrain. We're over the top of the Bielak on our way down to Sorley's. It remains apocalyptically wet. Look at that waterfall. Wow. Power in there. Right, onwards. Hopefully, we can get up in there and get a bit of warmth at least. Weather's still unrelenting as we try to pass high above the river Finiskeg, which is down in the valley bottom there. We're trying to get down to Sorley's for a reasonable time. Don't run away ladies! <laughs> Do you know the way to Sorley's? That way. Sorley's, saw legs. Oh, 
that bridge is going to take us over to Finnis Cake Bay, I think it's called, where Sorley's is. I'm the bridge. I have to admit, at the end of that day, the morale was just too low to be forming the experience that we had at Sorley's. The tiny and fairly dingy brothy was full. Everything was too wet to create a decent fire and there was hardly any campground outside. So that is Sawley's Bothy in the background. Didn't really feel like taking much footage when we arrived here last night because it was fairly um, apocalypse weather. That continued throughout the night uh, and was even worse this morning. Cape Wrath Trail, day four, and we've woken up to this. So we've taken a sort of zero morning to try and dry things out. Well, I mean, we couldn't even put the uh, tents away this morning. It was so bad. So, yeah. Anyway, things have been inside drying a bit and we're gonna make a bit of a track now and just try to go for Barrisdale. Just starting our climb out of uh, Sorley's. Late start, but uh, we're feeling much better for it. Views remain spectacular, I'll show you. It's coming over the top from the beach at Sorley's. It's an ancient settlement called Karnak. And that's the bridge in the distance, uh, which Neil's heading towards. There's a white speck on the left, the bridge over the Karnak. And then we're going to move to walking along this valley following the River Karnak. We're just plugging through endless bogs along the edge of the River Karnak as we head towards the top of the valley where there's going to be a big pass over into the uh, Barrister. Tough going. This is the easy bit, I think. Oh, we're just taking a little break for the backpacks down, take the weight off. It's uh, tough going, but incredible scenery up the uh, River Karnak. You've really got to take your time on that section. Quite a drop down to the River Karnak, as you can see. And it's slippy, muddy, boggy, technical rocks. Just take your time. See the weather's lovely again. Top end of the River Karnak. I see a lot of people talk about this spot. Making it a good campground, and yes, it would in good weather. Nice flat spot there. But right now, not a hope. Little sheepfold, which is the landmark of use from the map. Decided it's up there through that cut through the rocks. There's a bit of a track visible here. I think the track's going to die off fairly soon. What a fantastic vision to arrive to as you get through to the top of the little summit at the end of the River Karnak there. Really enjoying the scenery on today's hike, even if the conditions remain tough underfoot. Weather has also been a little bit better, which is helping us, isn't it, Neil? Definitely. Yeah. Makes it more enjoyable, not being, being so constantly. Well, we've just climbed up that. To give you an idea, I'll pan up. Oh, there we go. Not a great one if you're scared of heights. Still, a bit further to go still. Not there. Or maybe not there and then down into Barristail Bay. Well, we've come from all the way down there. It's a serious climb, but actually quite enjoyable. At least oh, I think so. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's not boggy up here, but I'm sure we've got that to look forward to on the way down to Barrisdale, which when we're, whenever we're over this summit is where we're heading for now. Oh, the lovely weather's back, as I said, into Barrisdale. So I've made good time coming down from uh, the top of uh, Barrisdale uh, into the bay. As it opens up ahead, it's a great view. Let me show you. So just coming down here, it's a pretty good path actually. I imagine there'll be a treacherous bit at some point, but so far, I'm quite impressed with this path. So you know you're on the right track when you are left of this house and just go past a sign indicating that you're entering the Barrisdale Bay area and that there is a camping spot and a bothy ahead. So that's where we're heading to now. See if the bothy's open, it'd be nice to use the amenities, uh, but camping ground sounds great too. So back inside the bothy, this was bed for the night. Simple, but actually really quite warm in here. And then there's a good main living room, which has cooking facilities, table to sit at, good drying rack, and even running water which you can drink. And electricity. And electricity, very important, yeah. So it's a good bothy. And they ask for five pounds per person per night donation. So I think at last we might have the day that we were hoping for. <laughs> Maybe don't speak too soon, but it's the first time in the whole trip that we've seen a bit of blue in the sky, so fingers crossed. We're just skirting around Barrisdale Bay on the way to the ascent over to Kinlockbourne. It's going to be a short day for us to try and um, get prepared for the day after, which is kind of a big one over the highest peaks, I believe. So yeah, let's try and enjoy this one for the challenges of the fork and ridge and the saddle. So, just progressing nicely around Barrisdale Bay. Absolutely beautiful. What a lovely place. Fairly soon there's going to be my turn off towards uh, Kinlock Horn as I work around the uh, ridge and the inlet. Uh, I think it's coming up right now, I'll show you that. So we get to a point in the track where there is an old uh, croft building, it's kind of a roof, and up there is where the track's going to lead us. Path up to Kinlock Horn, up we go. So we're just progressing over towards Kinlock Horn. Neil's a little bit behind because his feet are quite sore. So I just keep having to stop to check that he's um, kind of all right and not too far back. Um, I'll give you the view, it's pretty great. Look at that as we descend. The views on this section are just magnificent really quite enjoying it because obviously the weather is nice and it's just the first time we've really had an opportunity to take in the scenery of the Cape Wrath Trail without worrying about getting thrashed by rain. So I'm just going to push on towards Kinlock Horn and um, see if we can hopefully get something in that uh, tea room. Yes, another beautiful spot. Unfortunately, our original plans of making it to Akna Shellock 
and taking the train back are probably not going to work out because of the distance and the difficulties of delay we had at the beginning combined with the difficult weather conditions which meant we've been struggling to catch up um, and more recently Neil's um, feet I think we're going to call it a day at Shield Bridge so today will be a trip to Kinloch Horn a bit of uh, restoration time and then tomorrow um, a big push to Shield Bridge um, which is just a better place for access it's another very nice section as we progress in towards Kinloch Horn. I really like the way the path hugs the edge of the uh, lock shoreline. It's a very dramatic and beautiful way to end the walk. So I had a chance to catch up with Neil. I spent about half an hour having um, a pack off lunch break and um, he arrived as well and I persuaded him to do the same. Um, we had a catch up, he's doing fine, he's just uh, progressing along and nursing his feet, so spirits were still good. And uh, I'm going to see him at the uh, tea room, which we hope will be open in Kinloch Horn. So we just entered uh, Kinloch Horn on this road. Um, and now I'm just going to head over and check out this tea room. Hopefully it's open. I can see a bike. I'm somebody who's staying at Barrisdale with us, so that's a good omen. B&B &B and tea room. <laughs> How many pieces, Neil? Two. <laughs> Me too. Light. <laughs> So we're just camped by the river in Kinloch Horn in, well they call it a campground but it's just a piece of flat land with some ponies on it as far as I can tell. And um, just about to get the food going, tents are up ready and um, yeah, that's a pretty spot. So I've got the speedster stove on the go and I'm having some um, fire pot orzo pasta bolognese tonight. And I'm going to follow that up with a dessert, which is one of these crumble framboise from Decathlon, which I had the other night and was sugary as heck, but very good. What are you having tonight? I'm going to do my classic Idaho and <laughs> perfect cheddar cheese mash. Neil's gonna... sponsored by Idaho and mash. He would like his oh, whole life should, to be sponsored by be. Idaho and mash. <laughs> Seven nights on the trot, Idaho and Mash. More if I want to get home. <laughs> and then I'm either going to put, there's a decision to be had, John West, excellent jacket toppers, or some petty chorizo besties, but I might open both. Besties, I think. Yeah. 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 Both. <laughs> <laughs> I had hoped that there would be more evenings like this, but look how perfect this spot is. yoga by the stream and we've got a couple of friends here we've got some ponies and the deer over there yeah it's just a fantastic spot just gonna let the sound of the uh, flowing water lull me to sleep hopefully the wind stays down it's not too bad right now and uh, hopefully it stays dry So just about to get uh, an early night. Um, we do have a big day tomorrow, the push towards Shield Bridge from uh, Kinloch Horn. Uh, I was just speaking to Neil and uh, a bit of a shame to hear that he's not sure if he's uh, enjoying or enduring it. And uh, hopefully that's just the um, anticipation knowing that there's a big day ahead. I hope he looks back and, and thinks that it's been a good experience and wants to do some more legs of it in the future. Anyway, let's get some good sleep and an early start and uh, 
get on the trail a bit quicker than usual. So that's the setup inside the Panchan 2. Got my little washing line, trousers hanging on there, little LED light. Uh, that's my spot beacon over there just for safekeeping. This is the uh, Aegis Max Wind Hard Time Quilt, which is incredible um, from AliExpress. Found this to be really good, and the weight is just unbelievable. It's something like 450 grams. So, yep, yeah, nice setup. I think it's nice to have a two man tent when you're on a trip like this because the sort of gear management and um, space to change and put something when you're a bit wet um, it could be quite a bit harder in a small solo tent so the sort of adventure racing tents would be no good for this uh, trip so yeah I recommend it I don't know so the final day, the final push to Shield Bridge begins. It's going to be a tricky day. And we're just entering the gate of the Kinloch Horn Estate, having had a fantastic uh, night camping by the river with the company of a couple of little Highland ponies. So along this track, we're expecting a steep ascent through the woodland. Um, and then some pretty serious stuff thereafter. So try and take it slow and steady today and get ourselves to Shieldbridge in decent time, hopefully for a bit of a feed. Well, we've just ascended from Kinloch Horn and that thing is seriously steep and uh, difficult gravel underfoot. We're by no means at the top yet, but just taking a quick breather. How are you feeling, Neil? Ready for the feeling okay, next bit? Actually. I'm feeling much better than I was yesterday, which is nice. Had a good bit of time to uh, cleanse and sort out the feet. Good yeah. dinner by the stream, a little bit of a fire, and then early night, so. And the guys at the bed and breakfast had no rooms, but you could use their shower. Yes, is, uh... showers, very welcome. We are showered. Um, for 10 quid fee, but it was worth it. <laughs> So <laughs> it was it was ten pound well spent. Yeah. Um, right. Onwards and upwards. Keep going. So we're at the top now. We're just going to follow that track down and bear right around the ridge, following the line of the pylons. So that's where we're going up there, up that valley that uh, meanders off to the right. So we've got Mullet Gorm, the Saddle, and Falcon Ridge in the far distance. We don't actually go up the ridges, but we sort of wind high around them. I'm led to believe there's quite a bit of rock scrambling up there. So we're just having a break and a snack before we go up there. Uh, you can't really get the effect from here, but we've just uh, climbed up underneath the saddle, which is right here. And our next task is to course between those two groups of boulders and then climb up uh, just under the right of uh, Falcon Ridge, which you can see there, this sort of sharp spike on the left. Yeah, the weather's really helping us, isn't it? So. Yeah, it keeps you positive and happy when it's uh, beautiful sunshine like this so so far a good day so difficult steep climb at the end and we've made it up to the summit to follow the ridge um, the Falcon Ridge line uh, around now it's gonna be a difficult boulder field scramble you can probably see in the distance but hopefully not quite as steep as we've just done Wow check out that view we're on the top of the Bialak now and uh, to my right we can see that there's still snow on the tops. It is a bit cooler and windier. We're spinning around the other way. There's this sort of little lock on the 
the top. So we just finished um, scrambling over a really tough boulder section around the underneath fork and ridge and it, it was really hard and slow. I mean it was more like climbing than uh, hiking. We sort of had to put the poles away because they were just getting trapped in everything. So the feet are a bit weary. We're just having a little break before we start the um, onward journey. So down there in the distance at the bottom of that valley, that's today's destination. Just noticed on the tops here, even more snow. I guess it is still early May. We're now just on an unrelentingly crap path that was difficult to find all the way down to the valley to Inbashil. It's really not very enjoyable. The scenery is not that special path is garbage and it's very kind of lots of angled rocks that like roll your ankle. I gotta admit I'm not enjoying this much. So we did it we're just walking into Shield Bridge. I can't say that I found that stage very enjoyable but uh, a slog and we got here and uh, we're hoping that there are some amenities that we can make use of. Hostelries. <laughs> so this will end stage one of our Cape Wrath Trail and we'll be back another time to um, head on to the next section. Um, the time that we've got to do it, we're probably going to have to break it into three stages. Um, so yes, we will look forward to getting back to Shield Bridge and uh, starting with the next leg onto the falls of Glomac. So we're just heading to the Kintail Lodge. Um, we've heard it has a few amenities that might be of interest to us. And here it ends at the Kintail Lodge Hotel with a beer and hopefully some good food. Oh my gosh, this is going to be epic. something special. <laughs> in you go, in you go. That's a haggis, what are they called? Haggis bon Haggis bon bon. bon. That's that. That's got, that's good. We've got haddock and chips, haggis bonbons, and haggis covered dirty fries. Mmm. Back where it all began in Fort William. In the rain. Not sure we fully explained what happened on the way, but the car park was closed that we tried to use, and so we had to find another one, a place we've never been to before that did long stay. And so that's why we're walking to a bit of a back of beyond part to find the car. Yeah. So the journey back to England begins in the rental car. Good news is Neil's car is ready to collect and hopefully we get that on the way. Until next time, Cape Wrath Trail. <laughs>